Hello, today we'll be going through the Try Hack Me room, Active Directory Basics. Let's begin. Let's go ahead and click complete for the introduction. In a Windows domain, credentials are stored in a centralized repository called. The main idea behind a domain is to centralize the administration of common components of a Windows computer network in a single repository called Active Directory. So the first answer is Active Directory. The server that runs the Active Directory services is known as a domain controller. Let's type in domain controller. Next question. Which group normally administrates all computers and resources in a domain? For domain admins, users of this group have administrative privileges over the entire domain. By default, they can administer any computer on the domain, including the DCs. Therefore, the first answer is domain admins. What would be the name of the machine account associated with a machine named TomPC? The machine account name is the computer's name followed by a dollar sign. For example, a machine named DC01 will have a machine account called DC01$. Therefore, the correct answer is TomPC$. Suppose our company creates a new department for quality assurance. What type of containers should we use to group all quality assurance users so that policies can be applied consistently to them? You can see here that organizational units are container objects that allow you to classify users and machines. Therefore, the correct answer is organizational units. For the next question, we're gonna follow along in the delegation section. Let's come here and type in Active Directory. Click on this. Right click on sales and click on delegate control. Click on next, press add and type in Philip. Now click on check names. Press OK, press next, tick reset user passwords and force password change and next logon. Click on next. Now click on finish. Now let's use Philip's account to try to reset Sophie's password. Let's close this and open RDP. Now let's copy the target IP address from here, 10.201.48.139. Click on connect. Now let's type in Philip. The password is Claire2008. Now let's go over to PowerShell. Go to search, type in PowerShell. Let's follow this command. Let's type in Sophie's new password. Let's perform the next command. Let's click enter. Now let's try to log into Sophie with her new password. Close this and close this. Let's open RDP again. Let's type in Sophie and the password we entered just now. Let's change her password. Now let's open this flag. So this is the correct answer. The next question is, the process of granting privileges to a user over some OU or other AD object is called delegation because it's what you do to give specific users some control over some OUs. Let's type in delegation. Now let's exit of the RDP. Let's go back to Active Directory. Now let's create two separate OUs for workstations and servers. Now let's click on THM, Action, New, Organizational Unit. Let's name it Workstations. Next, click on THM again, Action, New, Organizational Unit, Servers. Click on OK. Now let's move the personal computers and laptops to the Workstations OU and the servers to the servers OU from the computer's container. Let's go over to computers. LPT stands for laptop and PC stands for computer. So let's control click the laptops and computers and drag them over to workstations. Press yes. Let's click on the remaining. Move them over to servers. Press yes. After organizing the available computers, how many ended up in the workstations OU? The correct answer is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it recommendable to create separate OUs for servers and workstations? The correct answer is yes, because you will want different policies for your servers and the machines that regular users use on a daily basis. Let's type in yay. The next question is asking, what is the name of the network share used to distribute GPOs to domain machines? 
You can see the answer here. GPOs are distributed to the network via a network share called sysvol. Let's type in the answer, sysvol. The next question is, can a GPO be used to apply settings to users and computers? GPOs can contain policies aimed at either users or computers, allowing you to set a baseline on specific machines and identities. Therefore, the correct answer is yay. The next question is, will a current version of Windows use NetNTLM as the preferred authentication protocol by default? You can see here that Kerberos is used by any recent version of Windows. This is the default protocol in any recent domain. NetNTLM is a legacy authentication protocol kept for compatibility purposes. Therefore, the correct answer is nay. When referring to Kerberos, what type of ticket allows us to request further tickets known as TGS? The correct answer is TGT, which will allow the user to request additional tickets to access specific services. When using NetNTLM, is a user's password transmitted over the network at any point? The user's password or hash is never transmitted through the network for security. Therefore, the correct answer is nay. What is a group of Windows domains that share the same namespace called? If you have two domains that share the same namespace, those domains can be joined into a tree. Therefore, the correct answer is tree. What should be configured between two domains for a user in domain A to access a resource in domain B? Having a trust relationship between domains allows you to authorize a user from domain THMUK to access resources from domain MHTEU. Therefore, the correct answer is a trust relationship. Let's click on complete for the conclusion. We have come to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.